Now it seems like we could always do with some more storage. You know, phones are taking high resolution photos nowadays. They're recording in 4K or 8K. If you're someone like me making YouTube videos, all this footage, all the B-roll needs to be stored somewhere. Games, when you install them on your PC, just take you know gigabytes and so on and so on. We always need more storage. Now, of course, one way is you can just add more storage to your desktop or to whatever machine you're using. Now, I'm using a laptop, which makes that a bit more difficult. I could uh, attach external storage via a, a USB port. Or another alternative is to use network attached storage. And as it says in the name, it's storage that's available over the network. Now, of course, you can buy network attached storage units from some of the popular manufacturers. Synology, for example, and I've got reviews of various Synology devices here on this channel. There are ones from Terramaster. Again, I've got some Terramaster reviews here. Or you could build one yourself, do it yourself, DIY approach. And to do that, you could take a secondhand PC or even a Raspberry Pi and then connect some storage to it and then you can make it available on the network. Now, to make it available on the network, you can either install Linux and then kind of manually configure it yourself. I've done that myself. I've got some videos about that here on this channel. Or you could use a solution, a network attached storage solution, like TrueNAS, like Open Media Vault, or like Unraid. So in this video, I want to look at the available solutions and the differences between them, so that if you go down the DIY route, you know what's available. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so let's get cracking. So why would you want to do this? Well, cost saving is one. Pre-built RAID systems or network attached storage devices can be expensive. Uh, I won't go into a bit of a pet peeve of mine, but I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you look about a small motherboard and some plastic and a power supply. And I do think they are more expensive than they need to be but that's a different topic. So you can save money doing it this way. Of course, there is the geek factor. You know, hey, I bought a second-hand PC. I put some storage in it. And I got it all working myself. That's also an important thing. And of course, learning. I mean, geeking out on these kind of things, also a learning thing that can be an important skill for other areas uh, in your life to do with IT, storage, networking, and so on. And then of course, customization. Building your own RAID gives you uh, complete control over your data, including how it is stored, accessed, and secured by building your own NAS RAID solutions. You can tailor and the configuration to meet your exact needs. So, you know, how much storage you want, what type of storage you want to use, what kind of processing power the device needs, how much power it's gonna use, how quiet it is. You've got complete control because you're doing it all yourself. Now, in general, what you're gonna need is a 64-bit PC or a Raspberry Pi in some cases. Four gigs of RAM is good, eight gigs would be better. And of course, you're gonna need at least two hard drives of some kind, whether that's a traditional mechanical hard drives or SSDs or M2 slots, doesn't matter whether how they're all connected, but it needs to uh, be two types of storage and probably gonna need boot media. So obviously you generally, you don't use the storage devices as what you boot from, where the operating system, where this NAS solution is installed, you generally have a different um, boot media. For that, some it's just a USB drive that you boot off and then it remembers the configuration. It's written on the file there and it, you've then got the extra hard drives in the PC. Now you can also get specialist RAID hardware, NAS RAID hardware here, for example, is a board from uh, Friendly Elec, which is built on the uh, CM3588 NAS SDK and as you can see there you can put in four one two three four uh, uh, M2 drives NVMe M2 drives uh, and then that's it you've you, that's all you need that little module uh, or you can use something like this uh, NAS unit which is using an Intel N100 CPU the one on the left is using an ARM based CPU and this one has got lots, lots of space for SATA. If you look over here on the right, there are six SATA connections and there's also some M2 connections in there as well. So you could just buy dedicated hardware if that's what you want to do. It's an interesting idea. Or you could just pick up a, a secondhand PC or a Raspberry Pi if that's the path you want to take. So what software are you going to run on it? Well, we're going to be looking today at TrueNAS which is one of the alternatives that's based on FreeBSD or Linux and uses open uh, ZFS, ZFS. Uh, you need a 64-bit 
a CPU x86 with 8 gigs of RAM and at least a 16 gigabyte boot device, of course, plus your storage. Or you can use Open Media Vault, that's another alternative, that's Linux based. Uh, you're going to need a 64 bit CPU with just 1 gigabyte of RAM or a Raspberry Pi and then an 8 gig boot device, and then of course, plus your storage. Or you can use Unraid, that's Linux based, 64 a bit CPU with four gigs of RAM and a two gigabyte uh, boot device plus storage. So different options there. FreeBSD, Linux, eight gigs of RAM, Raspberry Pi, four gigs of RAM. You're going to have to, that's one of the things you're going to have to look at when you make your decision on how you're going to build your custom uh, NAS setup. Now, before I go into those three in detail, there are other solutions that I haven't had time to cover in this video for various reasons. Some of them are not as popular, uh, but you can also remember, you can do it all yourself from the command line. As I said earlier on, you can define Samba shares, you can use Linux's built-in RAID configurations. There's CASA OS, which does have a network attached storage uh, built into that whole overview there. Don't think it's got RAID, but you can use uh, network attached storage. Uh, there's Cockpit, which you can add on top of Casa OS or add on top of other Linux distributions. I think that will give you a RAID. I've not really played with it very much. There's another option called Turnkey File Server. Again, that can give you network attached storage. Rock Store, again, another one. Uh, so there are others out there. So I, if I haven't covered them, uh, it's probably because they're not as popular. These really, the ones I'm mentioning now are really the top options that you've got. Okay, let's start with TrueNAS Core. So TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Enterprise are based on FreeBSD with heritage back to the days of FreeNAS. The very first computer book I ever wrote and got published by Pact Publishing was on FreeNAS and it uses Open uh, ZFS. Now there are commercial products available from uh, IX systems that offer enterprise versions and their own servers with all the hard drives and everything available. So they're offering a full hardware, software and aftercare kind of solution. That's their business. Uh, Samba, NFS, FTP, RSync. You can do RAID, RAID Z, you can do mirroring and so on. The source is available on GitHub. Uh, TrueNAS Core is free to use. TrueNAS Enterprise has got a price attached to it. Support comes from the community via forums, but this has been superseded in many respects by TrueNAS Scale. And we'll talk more about TrueNAS Scale in a moment. Here are some pictures. So it's all done via the web. You get a web login page. Here is the kind of a web administration that you've got. You can, you know, turn on and off NFS, RSync, so on. You can edit things, you can configure them in, in different ways. Now, as I mentioned, it's really been superseded by TrueNAS Scale. That's basically, they've moved away from FreeBSD and moved over to a Debian Linux uh, solution with Open uh, ZFS. There are commercial products, again, available from IX uh, Systems. Similar set of uh, functionality, SMB, NFS, FTP, RSync, and so on. You can do RAID mirroring, but the Linux ones also allow you to use Docker, KVM, and uh, Kubernetes. Again, source code all on uh, GitHub. TrueNAS Scale is free to use with support via the community in the forums. Again, the web interface is similar. You can see a similar skin, similar theme there, though it is actually a different product. Here's a picture of the, the dashboard, for example. Now, while we're mentioning TrueNAS, there is a new OS coming. Even the day of making this video, it's still not actually available. There's a beta sign up waiting list you can use. Now, it's basically built on top of TrueNAS scale. So that's the Linux version of TrueNAS. It will offer a streamlined and automated experience. We'll have a simple UI making it easy for users to set up and manage their own NAS server. That's the byline. That's what they're trying to aim at. Uh, again, it does support OpenZFS because of its TrueNAS uh, heritage. Linus of Linus Tech Tips has invested money uh, in uh, Hex OS, and there's meant to be a beta coming ar around now, Q3 of 2024. It's where we are now. Haven't seen it yet. So that's one to keep an eye on uh, if you're interested in NAS solutions. And they have published a screenshot of what Hex uh, OS will look like. Uh, and here is the dashboard. They're aiming for simplicity. Now, the next choice up in a completely different vein is the Open Media Vault. It uses uh, Debian Linux, works on a normal PC, 64-bit PC, or on the Raspberry Pi. Again, you've got Samba, NFS, FTP, RSync. 
You haven't got OpenZFS, but you have got ext 3 4 XFS, JFS, ButterFS, and so on. You can use RAID, all the different RAID levels, uh, 0, 1, 5, 6, and so on. All the sources available on GitHub, free to use, community support via the forums. Uh, and again, very nice web interface. That's how you do it all. Here is the dashboard. Here you can see you can, you know, do things with the network, the users, the storage, what services you're running, you know, FTP server or whatever, all available via a web interface. And the last one of our big three is Unraid. So it's Linux. It installs to and boots from a USB flash drive. So you don't need a third hard drive or a third uh, you know, uh, SATA drive of some kind in there. It boots from the, the uh, flash drive supports, SMB, NFS, FTP, R-Sync. It can use uh, XFS or ButterFS. Now it's different to the other two, no RAID support. So you're not getting the speed improvements that you get from RAID, which is, you know, uh, under certain setups, depending how you do it, when the data is being read from the disk, it can read from two or more disks simultaneously and therefore get you the data out quickly. But it does have this, that's why it's called Unraid, but it does have parity protection. So you do have an extra drive that you put in and parity information is added onto that drive. And parity basically uses XOR, I've got a couple of videos here on XOR on this channel if you're not familiar with the mathematical operation, the bitwise operation of XOR. But basically, if you lose a drive, the data can be rebuilt by looking at the data on the other drives and what's in the parity drive, and that can uh, rebuild the failed drive. In fact, you can actually nominate two drives as parity information, which means you can lose two drives as well. Now, it's not open source. There's another big difference, and the different uh, levels of pricing start from $49. Now here is a picture of the dashboard again, all web administration. And here I wanted to point out, here is where you can define the parity drive. So here are all the disks that you can add in. Here are the parity. If you have one, you can lose one disk and it can get rebuilt. If you have two, you can lose two disks and it can get rebuilt. So all the solutions I've covered are good. I wouldn't have a problem in recommending any of them, really. You say, hey, go ahead and, and use those. They're all good. If I was forced to pick, it would be between true NAS scale and uh, OMV. If you really push me, which one would I go for? I would go with OMV because it has lower system requirements uh, and it does offer support for the Raspberry Pi. Okay, that's it. I'd love to know whether you've built your own uh, DIY NAS, got a second hand PC, put some hard drives in it, uh, and then installed one of those uh, solutions I just talked about. Love to hear about your successes and your failures. Uh, because that can be useful for other people. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, then I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.